Coach Simmons here. With the release yesterday of Jackson State's schedule, I want to see how the narrative is going to change. Not just for Jackson State, but for the whole SWAC. They don't play anybody. All they play is SWAC opponents. They don't go out of conference. And the SWAC people were saying, y'all don't want to play us here. Why we got to go there? That's the whole argument. The, the non-SWAC fans, the PWI fans, they want to play you at their place. The SWAC, opponent, the SWAC people are like, you know what? Screw that. You come to ours. So what I'm going to do with this video, we're going to go through and see how many games are winnable for each and every team in the SWAT non-conference. And no, I'm not going to count the blood money games because we know some games you just got on your schedule just to get some money. But some games are just FBS, low-hanging fruit, I think are winnable. I have more faith in your team than you do. Let's start with every single one. Start with the SWAC. SWAC West. The man, the myth, the legend, Fred McNair. So his three out of conference games at home to Stephen F. Austin. They have a home and home with Stephen F. Austin. They play at Tulane, at McNeese. This is the kind of schedule I would love for the SWAC to do. Get a home and home with get a home and home game against uh, some FCS opponents. Make them come to your place first. Then get a low hanging fruit. FBS team. That's all, all I want. This is a good schedule. I do think if McNair had Tulane towards the end of the year, they could have won that game. So you never doubt Coach McNair he has time to train and teach his kids. That being said, knowing the front line for Stephen F. Austin like I do, they may pull out McNeese. But those first two games, I don't see them winning. UAPB. So far, they have not released their entire schedule. But what they have so far is Oklahoma State. Honestly, it's a blood money game. I don't see them winning it. So that's very quick. Now, Grambling. This is what I'm talking about when I say Neutral site games. So Grambling is going to go to Arkansas State. And I have picked them to beat Arkansas State with or without Art Browse. I put it on wax. Northwestern State even though it's a neutral site game, it's a home game for Granber. And I do see them winning that game. Um, Jackson's going to be game of the year. Unfortunately, I don't think Granber has the horses just yet to attack that defense, especially in the secondary. They may trick them every now and then because Hunter is still a freshman, but but I do like the two-on-one. And this two-on-one will get Grambling ranked in the top 15 
Mark my words. Grambling will be a top 15 team this year. Prairie View AM. Prairie View has scheduled what is called a definition of low hanging fruit. They got out of conference games. True. These games are not against the best, <laughs> but they're out of conference. So Abilene Christian, Lamar should be wins. If Coach Dooley was back and they had played U- UIW, I would have called a revenge game. But because Prairie View does not average anybody going to their damn games in that beautiful stadium, that's going to be a loss. So once again, I had a swag going two and one out of conference. And yes, I have seen Lamar play and I've seen Abilene Christian play. The talent gap that people think is not big between the SWAC and PWIs on LCS level. The difference is in the coaching. Because one can tell one can say, especially getting kids from the South, the SWAC has more talent. Overall, it's just the coaching is not innovative enough. But that being said, Prairie View is going two and one through this this uh, stretch right here. Texas Southern, look. Last year, I told everybody Rice was a big game. This year, they're going to Denton, Texas, and to San Antonio. These are more of a recruiting trip than they are actual games. San Antonio, UTSA is trying to lock up their region. Texas Southern is trying to get into their region for recruits. They're already getting into the Austin region and they're getting into the um, San Marcos region. If they can get into San Antonio, they'll have I-35 pretty much locked up, which is why also they're trying to get North Texas. Because North Texas plays in Denton, which is right outside of Dallas. If you're from Texas, you understand San Antonio to Dallas, I-35 corridor. (sighs) I'm not impressed with Texas Southern's defense at all. I am impressed with the offense. (sighs) And I did play at North Texas, all right? So I got to say that first. Texas Southern has a chance of pulling off one of these games. Not UTSA. Actually, they have a shot of winning both games. Um, I can't pick it yet. I won't know until after the, the spring game. But te- North Texas has a better quarterback in both of those games. They have better receivers in the uh, UTSA game. Now, the problem is going to be on defense. Texas Southern's line cannot hang up with anybody in this, in this games. So, they can squeeze out against North Texas. If they get UTSA overlooking them, they can go 2-0. and And I don't care what nobody says, the thing about these games is the field. North Texas University plays on a great turf field. It's meant to make your teammates faster. UTSA plays in a dome in Texas. So no heat will get a 
will be a problem with them. If they get up to a big enough lead, they can withstand the second half. We need to go over a uh, sudden schedule. Let's say two and one. All right. Just, just be honest with it. Two and one. If they go anything besides two and one here, Coach Duty getting fired on year one. If they go three and zero. Oh, he may get lynched, <laughs> but if he goes two and uh, one and two. He getting fired. That's all I'm gonna say about that one. Alabama a and I have told y'all before, and I'm picking them to go 2-1. and one. I think Austin P is the kind of game you need to schedule. Troy will fall to Alabama a and You can mark it down. February 23rd, 2022. Cole Simmons said Troy is going to fall. And there's no Helen coming. It's going to be Coach pissed off Maynard in the Alabama a and Bulldogs. Tell him I said it. This, this, that's the reason why one of the games I'm giving away free tickets. I want more Alabama a and fans to see Troy get their ass beat. So, two on one. No matter how bad we think people are, no matter how crazy you think they are for hiring who they hire, you may call this black racism. You may call it that. But I never doubt a black man's ability until he proves otherwise. I never doubt anybody's ability to prove otherwise. Coach Eddie Robinson Jr. has a shot of being two and one coming out of UCLA. I think the big reason why, and this is actually smart, it had nothing to do with him, but it's smart. Alabama State playing in UCLA, Coach Jackson and Les Resistance Coach Sanders are trying to build a pipeline to California. He has the first team playing in California. I'm not crazy. I'm not going to say Alabama State has a chance to beat UCLA. If they remain healthy and keep the game close, I mean, have it a 14 point game and UCLA scores a final touchdown, make it 21. But having a close game, they can disrupt the pipeline for Grambling. They can start getting kids because. As a friend of mine once said, the last time the SWAT got a bunch of kids from California, the Black Panther started. Those kids in California need and want HBCU football. If you show them that a shot to be competitive and you show them the stadium that Alabama State has, man, that pipeline from California to Alabama State to Grambling to Jackson State to FAMU to all these teams is going to be freaking amazing. Because right now, the kids are only being recruited if they're transfers. Which is why Campbell made the jump they did in recruiting 
They recruited nothing but high school players. If Alabama State can start getting kids from California and from high school, the modern day kids, it's going to be a wrap for the SWAC. But they have a chance here of beating Howard and the SWAC MEAC Challenge. Please, Alabama State, somebody from the damn SWAC beat the MEAC. I don't care if you beat the MEAC in checkers. Beat the motherfuckers in Uno. Something. Just beat the MEAC one time. And you better beat Miles College. Sorry. <laughs> All right, so Bethune Cookman. <laughs> Bethune Cookman was probably the best two win team in the freaking history of football. Any level. You have a new quarterback that played in the SEC. If I ain't gonna lie, folks, but Tune Cooper getting their butt smashed by Miami. I, I tried. But SC State has a tendency under Coach Pugh, I've looked at the history of starting off real slow. And Coach Sims does have a history of beating Coach Pugh. If Coach Sims has a flashback <laughs> and beats Coach Pugh, that would be great for the swag. <laughs> so we're rooting for you there. Tennessee State, at this point of the season, offense should be should be put together. The defense is going to be on point no matter what, but the offense will be put together by this point of the season. And I do think this is going to be one, it's going to be close because they're playing in that big, empty stadium. If they play it on campus, maybe a blowout for Tennessee State, but playing that big, huge stadium, it's going to be a, shoot, going to be a close game. I do think Bethune Cook will lose that game. So say one and two. Please go one and two. Like I said, somebody got to beat the MEAC in something. I don't care if it's a it's a King of the Ring tournament wrestling something. something. <laughs> All right, I'm begging you. I fam you. FAMU will be SC State again. FAMU will be Albany State. Okay. That's really all I could say. Um, North Carolina is... If Mac Brown wasn't there, yes. Low-hanging fruit. Mac Brown's not losing to FAMU. It is not happening. Um, the talent gap between North Carolina and FAMU will start to show about second quarter. FAMU has good frontline talent. There is no depth like North Carolina. And they have a chance to win the a ACC. So I think that could get out of hand unless um, they can control the ground game, but we'll see. Um, so I do see two and one from that one as well. Valley. People. Valley is very scary. Y'all gonna respect Mississippi Valley this year. For one thing, they're starting off 3 0. Charleston State, Austin P, and Delta State are going to catch their rails. It's point blank, period. They're going into Jackson undefeated. 
And depending on what Charleston State does after that, that loss, Yeah, they may have value ranking the top 40. Because Tarleton State and Austin P, I have Austin P losing the. Um, one loss, win, loss, or one and two. One. Okay, never mind. Never mind. But Valley is going to be in the top 40 before that game against Jackson State, depending on what happens to Charleston State. Mark my words. And speaking of Jackson State, Alley Conference games, we know they have, what, three, right? Get back to it. Tennessee State, Grambling, and Campbell. Fans are going to feel cheated. But that ground and state game can end up being a swag championship. Being honest with you, people. That ground and state game can end up being the swag championship. Campbell will be ranked in the top 20 this year. Towards the end of the year, right around the time they're coming to play Jackson State. There's a chance that, and I said it last night on the video about Jackson State, the winner of the FAMU Jackson State game will play in the SWAC championship. I think Alabama A&M is just one notch below those two teams. Alabama A&M is a linebacker away from being on, on par, on paper, with those two teams. Because of the difference between Willie Simmons, I give Coach Prime all, all the credit in the world, and Coach Maynard. Coach Maynard offenses are more creative. Now, Coach Sanders is changing it up this year. Hopefully, it does work, but one linebacker away, maybe a safety away from being on par with those two, those two schools. Jackson State has no business losing either one of these games. Probably the Campbell game is the closest it's going to get. Um, even with Art Browse possibly coming in for Grambling State, they have had a year, full year, to get under to get the performance up the way it should be, to get knowledgeable of the uh, scheme. Jackson State is going to either be the black national champions or semifinalists in the division FCS playoffs. Because the perfect storm for me, keep in mind I am trying to remain neutral, but I want to see black empowerment, I want to see Dominance from a swag. My perfect storm is Jackson State loses to FAMU. And wins every other game. Grambling State wins a swag. Well, or he wins the Swag West. That would mean also, uh, my bad, I'm sorry. Also, Tennessee State almost did it last year. 
They have a chance this year. Looking at their schedule. Go. One, two, three. They have a chance this year to do what they couldn't do last year. And that is win their conference. And if JSU has a win over Tennessee State, over Grambling State, and Campbell, which will be ranked and probably in their conference, they have a chance, me, to they have a chance to win some games in their conference. If they can win their conference, Tennessee State wins their conference, and Grambling wins the Swag West, and Jackson State ran through everybody but FAMU, Jackson State will be hosting a playoff game this year. If they host a playoff game or two, they're getting to round three of the playoffs. It's as easy as that. If Jackson State fucks around, messes around, and gets to the championship this year, the world is going to end. Because on paper, on paper, just like I tell Cowboy fans all the time, on paper, Jackson State has the most frontline talent of any FCS program. And that was actually told to me last night by a North Dakota State fan. On paper, they have more talent than any FCS team. All we got to see now is can they put it together? So, in closing, the SWAC... They've done their due diligence. There is no complaints. There's no moaning. There's no crying. Well, there's going to be people crying and moaning, but we ain't talking about them. There's no if, ands, or buts. The schedules this side of Southern have answered every single question. All we got to do now Wait to after the spring game, see who transfers, where they end up at, and wait for the season. Coach Simmons with the final wrap of the entire SWAC's out of conference schedule. They have a chance. <clears throat> if these games pan out the way they should, with their out of conference schedules being what they are. They will have the most dominant out-of-conference games, scheduled games of any FCS conference. What I know, I'm just Coach Simmons, but I'm out.